We're about to talk about Peacemaker, the finale of the season, and we are going to talk about it in an open, spoilery kind of way. So if you have not had the opportunity to watch the newest episode of Peacemaker, now is the time for you guys to check out because we are going to talk about it in all of its freaking glory. And there's a lot of glory. So <laughs> with that said, Chris, what is our fifth main topic today? This is from Vigilante Sword. Holy shit, Balls Campia. Did you <laughs> see the Peacemaker fin final episode? I know you did. Rhetorical question. What the actual F? I was so worried they wouldn't stick the landing, but man, they did. And that cameo at the end was such perfection. And my man V had his best fight sequence in the show so far. I'm honestly out of breath after watching it. So effing good. What did you guys think of it? And what was your favorite part? All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in. And I, I don't I don't know what to say about that finale, except, oh my God. That finale Dude. was so good. Dude. It... And I, I can relate with what he's saying, saying, you know, I, I was kind of worried they wouldn't stick the landing because the show's been so good. And it is so difficult, even for the best of shows, to truly stick the landing. But they stuck it perfectly. They set up some cool stuff. They brought, they did something. First of all, let's just talk about that cameo for a second. Let me see if I can if I can bring this up here. Uh, whole second, Peacemaker uh aquaman they oh. they did a cameo okay or really it's it's a group cameo they did that wasn't just a cheap pop cameo it was a cameo that they throughout the series had been laying groundwork for all through the entire series all and through they this season. set it up at the beginning of this episode the, when they set up in the beginning of this episode they set it up in episode one they set it up in episode three they this was they set up this joke about his disdain for justice league about aquaman fucking fish and about they laid the groundwork planted the seeds the whole season and then instead of just having a cheap shop a cheap pop cameo they brought in a cameo that was directly tied in because they had actually been building towards this cameo the entire season. When I looked up at the screen and I saw what is clearly Henry Cavill's Superman, even though that's not Henry Cavill, you saw Superman, Aquaman, Flash, and Wonder Woman all show up. I just started dying laughing. Dying laughing. And then Peacemaker completely unfazed. You're late, dickheads. Or whatever it was, he kind of said whatever. And not going to say, go fuck a fish and whatever. Like, That's not true. And Barry, that is true. The One of the best lines I've heard in television history, Aquaman looking at Barry and saying, fuck you, Barry. I, it's, I want a poster of just Jason Momoa as Aquaman saying, fuck you, Barry. That is great. And again, what made the cameo great was, again, it wasn't just a cheap pop. They had been building towards that one moment. And oh man, it delivered. And I had thought at first it was just going to be the silhouettes. And Peacemaker would make some snarky remark at them and walk away. The fact that they actually showed us that Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller were there didn't show us Gal Gadot or it wasn't Henry Cavill. That's fine. That to me was amazing. Vigilante went to town in this episode. Like we really got to see why he is like he's a goofball. He's one of the most lethal human beings in the world. Uh, the beheadings, the, the the limbs being taken off of so bodies. Good. It was so fun. John, so many I just beheadings. want to say James Gunn was interviewed, I think it was Deadline, and said that Ezra Miller did like a half an hour of improv, and he said it was one of the funniest things he's ever seen in his life. So I hope <laughs> they release that as a as a thing. Mm. I'm surprised they didn't release it in the post-credit because yeah. they always do the postcard where they somebody runs on a line a little bit longer. I'm surprised they didn't put that in, but we got Vigilante. I mean, it's fine. Uh, Economist was great. Just hopping over the fence and his leg busting like that. The whole thing. And by the way, that big moment, because we've been, we've been saying, look, there's something more to the butterflies because Judo Master seemed bought into it. And then it was perfect at the end. Like, listen, we're here. We're here, but we decide we need to kind of rule you because we got to save you. And by the way, that speech, what was it, Goff? Was that the yeah. name? Was that? Goff. It was Goff. When Goff starts giving him the speech saying, look, we've been watching you guys. You guys deny science. <laughs> you guys treat minor inconveniences as an affront to your freedoms. 
you guys are just heading for your own destruction. So we got to take in and make you be saved. And I love that you actually saw Peacemaker in that moment struggle with that. And but he then he made his choice. And the fact that again, going back to the what they laid the foundation for with the human torpedo helmet, <laughs> the fact that he didn't even check with her. There is just a human torpedo, boom, killed the cow. Am I the only one who felt bad for the cow? I felt so I bad felt for the bad. cow. I felt so bad for the cow. But the cow had to die. I mean, I get it. To get rid of all the the butterflies. I mean, that was incredibly great. The dad reappearing to him. Also, then showing us that that's probably going to be going into season two as well. I loved that. That he's going yeah. to be. This is something so he good. doesn't. One gunshot to the head does not cause fit, cure all of his childhood. And issues. even that was set up in the previous episode. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. I I thought it was a little bit of a cop out that both Hardcourt and Vigilante, who took what they initially made it look like were fatal shots. We're perfectly fine after that. All right. I was kind of expecting a big significant death. Yeah. At the end there, we didn't get that. That's okay. But even like at the very end, as Peacemaker's there on his deck, he Goff is still there. <laughs> and he's like feeding Goff. It's like, look, I, I get it, but we couldn't let you take over the world. But yeah. you're cool to hang out here. Dude, I can't. One of the things about the show that I thought was amazing is in the middle of all this mayhem, you suddenly get this amazing piece of character pathos. Well, I dye my beard. And all, and oh, you, God, and how beautiful was that all moment? The, all oh, the God. shots, all the cutaways to, like, Peacemaker, to Chris's face and all that. I mean, you really felt it. Like, suddenly you're... you're, And now we go into our, 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 our drama movie already in part progress, and suddenly I'm watching this going... <laughs> Oh man, and I, we all became the characters in the show. We're like, oh, we forgot about the alien invasion for a minute. Yeah, and it was really good. It, it reminded me of a saying. Like you have a saying that goes like, everybody has a story that we just hasn't haven't heard yet. Another version of that saying is, everybody is fighting a battle right now that you just don't know about. Mm -hmm. And there was something again. This is so James Gunn. Yeah, to bring something truly profound and deep into something as bonkers and ridiculous as this, but. When he's sitting there talking about, you know, why did that human die and things like that? Maybe because he's socially awkward. Maybe because he he hasn't had a girlfriend. And maybe he thinks this is going to help. And maybe he thinks people does, doesn't don't notice. But maybe deep down he knows that they do. I, I mean, look, there, there's something about that that I think was a great reminder about everything you make fun of somebody about is probably a real point of... I'm going to say a tender point to them, something that, that represents something much deeper for them that, hey, don't you think that they wish that was different? Don't you think Campia wishes he was better looking? Don't you think Don't you think that whatever wishes that their feet weren't so big, don't you think that person wishes that they came from a different set of circumstances? I mean, I actually found that completely profound. It was almost out of place. It was so profound. But you know what else was great about that? Is that a butterfly would know these things? Yeah. So it's so so he got away with this. So so from a plot point, he actually had to say it. I, I mean, he, but he thought this could be the end of his life, you know. And he was admitting something that was profound. He knows that this could be the end of me because they're going to discover that I'm not a butterfly. But his fellow butterfly is like. Yes, you've tapped into the human consciousness and you're saying things that only you would figure out because no one else would know this because you're deep into the psyche of the, 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 the human you've possessed. So it really worked on so many different levels. And I'm like, this is genius. And then the, 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 it's such great writing. And when you cut to, when you cut to, to our main characters reacting to it, it was, it was sad and poignant and i really was like oh man i was but, like but just it yeah. adds to it though then at the end as economist goes back to work the after pulling out his laptop the only other thing he puts on his desk is that picture that of the, all of them and he looks at the picture and he smiles at the picture and i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that like that was that was beautiful and by the way a major major shift in the dceu with abadeo i always pronounce abadeo is that how abadeo. we pronounce abadeo Abadeo coming out at the end and basically outing Project I X. I'm like outing that. it and outing her mother. And dude, like that, that fundamentally changes that moving forward. And I also, one of my prediction did, predictions did not come to pass. I really thought Abadeo's wife mm. was going to end up being somebody 
significant. Same. I like with the whole thing about her being front and center, talking about Gotham. I really thought we were going to. You know what? I also suspected. I suspected that not only is she somebody significant, it's somebody her mother planted in her life. That could still happen in season two. I mean, maybe yeah. they could, but that that's kind of something I thought of. Anyway, Chris, you watched, you know, Peacemaker. What? to you stood out as like a big highlight moment to you and what was your general takeaway of it oh man i can't believe we got waller in there that cut to viola davis was yeah like, and of course she'd be like what the hell is this i'm so excited for the repercussions of peacemaker and what that has to do for the greater dceu yeah i'm really really pumped about that i i kept expecting though because we had hardcore and vigilante both injured right when vigilante popped up and was just like hanging out with everyone i really expected him to have gotten butterflied and I was so relieved when All he right. hadn't been and keeled over in the hospital because I was really waiting for that. Same with when Harcourt started getting that butterfly in her mouth. I was like, oh, gosh, we're going to we're going to lose some of the 11th Street kids. We're going to have the group messed up. So I'm really happy we still get everyone. I know some people probably in the chat here do think it's a bit of a cop out that we didn't have any major losses, but I would have been heartbroken. I would have been so heartbroken Agreed. if we lost anybody because I love this group so much. I think all the psychological stuff we're going to delve into in season two with Chris is going to be super, super compelling. I'm so glad we still have that actor around as well. His white dragon is so, so compelling, so interesting. And there's a lot to unpack there. I'm just pumped that we're getting more. Yeah, and I, I can't help but wonder if knowing that they were going to get season two, if that may have changed something they did at the end, like mm. maybe somebody was going to die at the end, but, mm -hmm. and you know what? We found out halfway through shooting that they're loving what they're seeing. We're going to get a season two. Okay. Change Harcourt from dying to surviving. Mm -hmm. And we'll show her kind of like war machine at the end of civil war doing, doing physical rehab, rehab yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know. That could be a case. Look, all I'm going to say is that other than, Whew. Look, I'll put it this way. Without getting too committed, this is one of the greatest seasons of superhero television there's ever been. Absolutely. I think season one, of, and I never would have guessed this, I think season one of Peacekeeper needs to be up there in the conversations with season two of Daredevil. I think it needs to be up there in the conversations with any season you want of Smallville or whatever, or up there with Doom Patrol and up there with whatever. I think this is the best DC television series ever. Also, I, I just think it's that good. The entertainment value, your Under entertainment roof. bang for your buck per minute in this show, it has to be one of the most entertaining, not just superhero shows, but fantasy, genre, sci fi, call it what you want. This is one of the most wildly entertaining comic adaptations ever made it was so good I, I mean i again i and i was skeptical about it going into it. even though i love the character Way in skeptical. suicide squad even though it's james gunn it's just that the trailer looks so low budget and the trailer looks so rather cheap to me that i mean once it started and it, you know what it was it was from the opening credits once like once it did that i'm like this show's going to be special. Well, and then hearing the song again for that fight scene. That was oh, awesome. Yeah. And how they yeah. slowed the song down. Yeah. That was really good. Oh. And again, I just felt bad for the cow. I know. <laughs> the cow just looks so unhappy from the get-go. With this little one-two. The one-two is like, adorable. Big old eyes. I mean, I know that Pacemaker had to do what he had to do, but... Yeah, he did. I get it. I get, I get it. it. But it's... Uh, but couldn't they cow. figure out a way to cohabitate, coexist, co-do something? Couldn't we well, all they were, just get like, along? Friendship once, is once magic. Once he found out, you couldn't... Like, I get it, because once he understood that their plan was, yes, they are here to take over and to take our choices away from us and stuff like that, he had to make a decision. It's like, if I that's know. the case, then activate human torpedo. And all that its guts fell out, and like, oh, that poor thing. Although, again, all that stuff was set up. Yeah. They explained it all. It was so well done. Such good plotting. James Gunn, I really hope that this gets nominated for, an, the writing gets nominated for an mm -hmm. Emmy. Yes. Because the writing was spot on. Yeah, I agree. A, a writing Emmy, I could totally see getting this. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What did you think about the season finale of Peacemaker? And what do you think about the season overall? I think it's one of the greatest episodes or seasons of superhero thing. I think the best thing, definitely anything from the DC side. Number one, I think it gets into the conversation with Daredevil and some other shows like that. What did you guys think about it? Jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts.
We want to take a moment and thank a sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. So guys, if you've been listening to or following me for any period of time, you guys know that one of my big concerns is often online privacy. And that's why I use ExpressVPN. Now, I know what a lot of you guys are probably thinking. You're thinking, well, why don't you just use incognito mode? Well, let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browsing history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website that you visited. And listen, it doesn't matter who your internet service provider is. Internet service providers in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so that your internet service provider can't see the sites that you're visiting. ExpressVPN also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. And ExpressVPN is available on all your devices. I mean, your phones, computers, even your smart TV. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash campia, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash campia, expressvpn.com slash campia to learn more.